What this video is gonna be about is one of these in-class assignments I gave in my MATLAB class. And we were going to be working on learning how to do user-defined functions with one output. So this is when we first learn how to do functions. All right, and a lot of students had problems getting this one done in time. So we're gonna go over it here. So first let's look over the problem. So I just got this problem from geometry and basically the area of a triangle whose three vertices are points given like this, where we have the coordinates. The area then can be found using this equation here. All right, so notice you have the different coordinates of each of the three points in this equation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a script that asks the user to enter the coordinates of the three points, P1, P2, and P3. We're gonna enter them in vector form to make it easy. Then the script will call a function, which we're going to name triangle. It's going to calculate the area of the triangle using this equation here. And then finally, the script will use a formatted print statement to display the result. All right, so the area that we display should have four digits to the right of the decimal point. All right, now that's all in the script. We also have to write the function called triangle. The inputs to that function will be the coordinates P1, P2, P3. And then we're going to have the output be the area of the triangle that's defined by those three vertices. And then down here, I gave you some test input. All right, so we had, you know, three points, the locations of those. And if you run this code after you put it all together, what you should get is you should get a prompt for coordinates for point one. This is what I typed in at the command window coordinates for point two, we're going to type this in on the command window, point three, we're going to type this in. Notice these are written as vectors, right? Look like row vectors here. And then after everything runs, we get this displayed. This is our result. So the angle of the triangle defined by these three vertices is 28.84. All right, so let's go over how we're going to set that up. Before we get to MATLAB, though, let's look at the function definition that we need to use. So remember for a function file, for a user-defined function file, this needs to be at the top of that file. You're always gonna start with function, then when we only have one output, which is what we have here, you're gonna have a variable for that output, equals the function name, and then in parentheses, you're gonna put all of your input arguments. And you could have one input argument or you could have multiple. All right, it's up to you depending on what your problem is. So this is the structure that we need. This needs to be at the top of the function file. At the very end of the function file, we need the word end. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's go to MATLAB and see how to do this. All right, so here we are in MATLAB. I've created this script file and we're going to be using that to call our function. So let's go through and we'll do all of the script work first and then we'll create the function at the end. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get our input from the user. So I'm just going to use that basic input function to do that. And let's just tell them to enter the coordinates of point one. And I want it in vector form, so I'm going to tell them to put it in vector form on this one. All right, so we have that. And then we're gonna do this two more times. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste this because it only needs a couple of things changed. So now let's change this to be P2. And then we wanna change this over here in the prompt to say 0.2. And then let's do that one more time. And actually I'm gonna put a semicolon at the end of these because I don't wanna see the input again. Actually, I was going to type that out. I don't need to. We'll just copy and paste there. Okay, so we got P3, and then let's change this to say 0.3 right here. And then semicolon. All right, so this is going to give us our input from the user, right? They'll be able to input the coordinates for each of the points, which are the vertices of the triangle. And then now what we want to do is we want to call our function that's going to calculate the area. So that function is going to be called triangle. And 
The variable name I'm going to give the area in the script is going to just be area. All right. So we're going to say area equals triangle, put parentheses, and then the inputs need to be those three points. So P1, P2, and P3. So that's going to call the function triangle. It's going to calculate the area, send it back to us. All right, so it returns the area value to us. Now I put a semicolon here on this line because I don't want to see the result at this point. I want to use fprintf so that I can format the information for the user. So we'll do fprintf and then parentheses. And then I'm going to say the area of the triangle is, and then we want a floating point number. So I'm going to do percent dot 4f and then slash n. All right. And then let's close that quote. And then let's do comma area. So MATLAB knows to put the area value in right here where we have the percent dot 4f. And remember when we use these conversion characters here, like right here, the f means floating point. The four here means you want four digits to the right of the decimal place. And because I didn't put a digit or a number before the decimal place, MATLAB will automatically figure out the field width that we need to have. So how many spaces I need to allow for my number. All right, so that is the end of the script work. Now we're going to go and create our function. So now to get a function, what you can do is you can go click on a new tab here and you'll get a new file. You can type in that uh, function line that I showed you all on that slide earlier. Or if you can't remember all of that, you can always go to new and then function. And then it'll give you this template. So what we're going to do with this template now is we're going to basically take out what we don't need and replace it with what we do need. So you see it says function here, this first word you should always have in your function file. Now right here it's got a vector for output arguments. For our case we're only going to have one output argument, which is going to be area. So you can leave the brackets and put area inside the brackets or you can just take it all out and put area, right? Or you could call it a, whatever variable you want. Because the variable you use here in the function file does not have to match what we used in the call statement in the script file. Next, we're going to put the function name, which is triangle. Next, we have our input arguments that we need to put in right here in the parentheses. So we have three input arguments. I have the vertices of the triangle, right? I have three points. So I'm going to put those in here. And I'm just going to call these P1, P2, and P3. All right, so now we have that. Now you could call these something else if you wanted. Okay, they don't have to have the same names that we used right here. The names don't have to be the same, but the order has to be the same. All right, if you mess it up, it's going to give you the wrong answer. All right, so now our first line is done. This is our function header here. And this next section is just for comments. So I always put what the function does. So you can just put this function calculates area of a triangle. And now we can do our calculations. Now remember the main purpose of this function here is to calculate the area. So now that's going to go next because this right here in this area that you see here, that's where we're going to do our calculations. So we need that area equation. All right. And then I'll show you all one more thing after that. So let's type in the area equation. All right. So you got 0.5 times, whoops, we have to put the actual multiply sign times our x1. Yeah, let's make that that. Times y2 minus y3 minus x2 times 
y1 minus y3 plus x3 times y1 minus y2. Okay, so if you look at that equation, you might be wondering, well, is that going to work? Well, what do y'all think? Is this going to work right here, the way I have this set up? No. Because I don't know what x1, y2, y3, y1, I don't know what those are. I haven't initialized those variables. So we have to do that first before we can do this calculation. All right, and I did it this way because this is what a lot of students did when they turned in their work. They forgot to actually initialize what those variables were. So the initialization of those variables needs to go above the area calculation because remember MATLAB works top down. So it's always going to go from the top to the bottom. So you can't use something until it's been initialized. So MATLAB knows what the value for it is. So I'm going to say x1 equals p1 1. Whoops. There we go. All right, so we have that. And then let's say x2. Actually, let's do, let's do the y1 first. Let's say y1. That's going to be p1 2. All right, so that'll be the second entry in the vector p1. So that's your y coordinate value for that vertice. And then let's do x2. That one will be p2 1. y2 is going to be p2 2. And then let's have x3, which will be p3 1. And then finally, we have y3, which will be p3 and if you wanted to shorten your code, you could. You could skip creating these variables altogether and just replace them in here. So for instance, instead of having this x1 here, I could have p1 parentheses 1 in the equation. All right. For me, though, I like to leave the equation in the form I was given it in and then create those variables that I need because that just makes more sense to me but it's up to you how you do that. All right, so the way we did the x and y values is basically we index in to the vector, pull out the individual values, and we're calling them the x and y terms. And now the last thing we need to do here before we can actually run this is I need to save this file. All right, so if you go to save as, notice it's already populating the name for you. So it's already calling it triangle. So we're just going to save that. And that file name has to match this right here, the function name. They've got to match. Case has to be the same. Everything has to be the same. Otherwise, MATLAB won't be able to find your function file. OK, so I think now we're ready to run. Let's hope I didn't make a typo that I missed. And let's see what happens. So go back to your script. And we're going to hit run, or run section, whichever one you're using. And now we're going to enter our coordinates for the point. OK, so point one, I'm going to say is it the origin, so 0 and 0. Point two, I said 10.3 and 0. And then finally point three, we got 15.7 and then 5.6. And I just randomly chose those values. Then we hit enter. So notice it tells me the area of the triangle is 28.8400. All right. So we entered in our values for the coordinates, entered them in as vectors, called our triangle function, used fprintf to display the area. The key thing about this uh, problem that I gave out was you had to create the separate function file. All right, so that's what we did right here with this triangle file. OK, so that's how you create a user defined function. Triangle will now stay in what I call my MATLAB library. So I can call it whenever I want to find the area of a triangle based on the location of those three vertices. OK, so hopefully that explains that one a little bit better. If you still have questions, just ask me in class. 
So I will see you guys next time. Y'all have a great rest of the day.